Sup everyone, this is Carrick from ACG, and today I come to you with another review for another game for another system, or in this case, systems, as this little game is the Rock'em Sock'em Robots with Guns simulator known as Livelock, a twin-stick online cooperative shooter from the fine folks at Tote Games, and published by Perfect World. Let's see if Livelock is a worthy entry into the twin-stick genre out now for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. As always, if you like this video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Livelock, the world's worst wake-up calls, robotic valets, and the return of Harambe as a mechanized antiquarian. Graphics are up first. <laughs> you know, sometimes you turn a game on and the first thing that enters your mind is, what the hell were the developers thinking? Apparently these guys were thinking about how they wanted to make the most intense and beautiful twin-stick shooter ever, because honestly, this game comes damn close. Come, join the fray from an altered isometric view, as robots taller than city buses burn, bash, bus, smash, slice, slam, and shoot their way through downtown metropolises like an apocalyptic version of the gun battle and heat, turned up to about 21. Honestly, one of the first things you notice is the insane use of color with super saturated effects contrasting with the blasted remnants of these places that really are so destroyed that calling them by their pre-destruction name seems a little bit ludicrous. The game absolutely revels in graphical embellishments with every little destroyable part and even the projectiles of everyone on screen having shadows. In fact, I think it's the shadows and their interplay with the game world that really lend so much depth here, that 3D view. As a pillar crumbles, you can see the dusk sun stretching across the landscape and getting blotted out by all those items exploding and the bits of blasted robots toppling into two halves into the dirt. And along with the colored lighting, specular highlights, and an absolutely wicked array of particle emitters sort of means that when you're just walking around, something in Livelock is either falling apart, dynamically impacting the worldview, or pretty much waiting to do so. Now, the use of character-specific lighting for differentiation during battle is really well done as well. And even if you change away from the starting weapons, that weapon will always have this slight hue of the character you're playing, resulting in this awesome and unique look that helps you place your player, especially when in co-op or when things get really busy on screen. Also, character design is really well done. For example, this is a character that basically looks like he's there just to send enemies to that digital static signal in the sky. And as you play, you can also change all this up in the firmware section, changing out heads, color of the character, and one other add-on. For example, cloaks, which, though sounding hilarious, means that I was able to have my gold lace massive robot running around with a gold foil cape like a 20-foot tall Warhammer 40,000 cosplayer. It was awesome. And with each weapon change, there is some new graphical way in which it's presented on the screen as well. And I know you know what I mean. Many times in games like this, the effect is in the offing of the enemies only, where the gun's overall mechanical actions seem the same from item to item, especially in this kind of view set. But the attention to detail here with things like the reload mechanics are drawn through a series of really unique animations. Also, the use of special effects to incorporate damage on your character is really interesting. It's all done in a way to simulate damage to the viewing of your character from a satellite view. With this minimalistic corrupted display slowly losing sync in different lines and then adding in all manner of effects to really nail that feeling of techno badassery. But to me, the crowning achievement is sort of channeling that nine-year-old kid I was when I got mad and tore my G.I. Joe toys arms off, and that means destruction. Everything is destroyable, and what breaks, breaks with satisfaction. And the debris collapses in particle-filled clouds that not only obscure vision in a cool and not obtrusive way, but also fades away to show you that most everything that is destroyed in the game is persistent in that game level and doesn't go away no matter how long you're in it. And boy, do I wish I could end it there, but unfortunately I can't because there are some issues. I have a GTX 1080 and yet the game slows down, dropping below 60, not a good deal below, but enough to draw questions on how it's going to run for you folks. Now this was at 1440p with some anti-aliasing on, moving those around I was able to actually get it solidly always above 60, but this isn't exactly 100% optimized. Much of this is probably related to the fact that there's physics everywhere playing out, but if you're going to go co-op, prepare, at least for now. To do so, you may have to do some options tuning, and that's with the newest patch today. However, luckily enough, there are some really good options in there that you can play with. As a package, the game just looks really, really good, but unfortunately it's held back a bit by some performance issues. Sound, music, and voice. And 
And of course, sound is up first. You know, in a game like this, sound and its importance can't be denied. It's a third eye to alert you to enemies' locations, the indicator of hits on enemies off screen, or warnings of new threats. And here, it's done really well. From the slam of these massive steel bodies hitting one another hard enough for Richter warnings, or this high shrill of shredding enemy robots apart, all the way down to the individual weapon rates and missiles burning past you left and right. It's all done very well in the surround spectrum. Sadly, there is a lot of repetition, and I was really surprised to find that most of the guns when fired have almost no variation, and man, can that get a bit annoying to your ears when you're retreating from a stable of enemies and the gun sounds like it's stuck in a sound loop. Now that being said, one thing the developer took care of is to make sure the sounds of enemy weapons, movements, and attacks leave enough space in their frequencies for you and your own. That means even when 1,000 robots all intent on making the first robotic-assisted black hole by crushing down onto you with you as the center, every weapon hit and explosion can be heard separately. Just lots of really excellent layering there, but man, that repetition hurts it. I would say as a package, good, but brought down by one or two things. Music. So Vibe Avenue is the composer of this game, and seriously, this is one of the most eclectic but still sonically thematic soundtracks I think I've heard in a long time. I mean, in one level, there's a chance you're going to hear elements from spaghetti westerns, horror synths, long drawn out horn solos, bell accompaniments, and crunchy techno chords. This is meticulous stuff, because I honestly can't remember the last time an Asian-inspired woodwind faded out of a haunting synth chop in my life, but... Well, there you go. Hell, it's even got a horn guitar pairing, which was just fantastic. While I may not have heard a good deal of these stylings all together at once in the past, I actually want to now. It's really surprising that they kept it together thematically, but it does. It is a really unique soundtrack. Very good. Voice. This is actually pretty well done as well. It's modulated to heavy robotic effect, and the main characters don't speak with emotion as much as they do personality. Now, this is a difficult road to ride, as it could easily become short circuit the Charlie Sheen edition, with robots acting and emoting much more than they should. Here, the personality is more at play than true emotion. For example, Hex, a fast-moving, sophisticated robot that sounds a bit more like a martial artist professor might sound than anything else. One part bravado, one part odd humor. Or Vanguard, the female Vox character that challenges pretty much anyone who enters a screen. For me, one of the main enemies, though, takes the cake. A mixture of Megatron from the new Transformers movies, but actually a capable commander. His threats have real traction, and the modulated tank track growl in which he seems to communicate through is really well done and adds a lot of presence to that character. Pretty good voice. And up next, of course, is the big dog gameplay. So the story goes something like this. Somehow mankind found out about a gamma ray burst on its way to Earth. Ignoring the fact that gamma ray bursts probably don't send RSVPs in the end, humanity still needs to do something, so they decide to upload all of their consciousness to a data bank. You are called the intellect, and you basically are woken up, and it's your job to rush to the place known as Eden and reawake humanity, so they can basically go out into this absolutely horrible world. But regardless of bad orders, you set off to do your duty. Now, first thing you do is pick campaign or open protocol mode which is sort of a survival style. Then you pick if the game is private, offline, online, and that kind of thing, and then you jump in. Like any twin-stick shooter, the magic is really in the movement and in the mayhem, and in many ways, Livelock really nails it. First, you start off with just your primary weapon and begin blasting. With most enemy deaths, this game's version of money pops out of their digital pinata bodies, and you traverse each landscape with a pretty good waypoint-style system as the story unfolds around you. Of course, with traversal really meaning shooting everyone in their face. And it's phenomenal. Everything just feels right, with everyone having melee attacks regardless of the weapon they're carrying, which means that even in a pinch, smashing someone in the semi-grill face can still do some serious damage. It never really makes you feel super weak. Weapons have reloads that you can auto or manually reload, both offering their own benefits. And they all have specific status effect changes, like slow, laser burn, and otherwise that do more stack damage. And that can really mean cooperative team destruction as well. Now, as you battle it out, you begin to gather functions, which are basically class-based skills and new weapons all along the way up to level 30. All manner of functions are available, and since they can be upgraded, it's almost daunting, really, in the number of different options when you add that all together. Orbital strikes, active camouflage, electrical shields, drone attacks, cluster mines, robotic one-liner, doppelgangers, and sentry guns. Nothing is wasted here, and there's even more. While there are a number of functions, those should never really be your go-to action, as they all have cooldowns of some kind. And you also have an ultimate function that comes up later. When it comes to weapons, it's good to remember that this game is not random loot, so you can see the weapons here in the video. It's diverse as hell and offers each character something that they can excel at, and more importantly, there are more than enough that can be upgraded as well, and you're pretty much guaranteed that no two or three people will have just the exact setup for a good long time. Now, once you've completed the level, you're rewarded experience and all manner of damage points, and between each level, you can either return to the lobby and upgrade or continue on. 
Upgrading costs this game's version of money, and one thing I liked is that you can continue to upgrade your basic weapon as long as you want, or switch out to a massive number of additional ones that you carry. And the thing here is the variety in which it's offered. Even the tank can wield a massive ship-sized cannon, my favorite, and upgrade it for massive damage, or switch it out for a shotgun that shoots rockets, because that's just how these guys do things. Battle is visceral and in your face, and I really like that. One of the reasons why that is, as well, is some very good AI. Livelock does it right when it comes comes to how enemies react and work together. And I think we've seen this in a lot of games. Twin stick shooters aren't known for their AI. In fact, I expected this would be like that special class in high school where the people go that have trouble learning except replace them with robots and everyone else is a fucking transformer. But instead, it's actually very good with some enemies as nothing more than berserkers in a game of violent touch football, while others are sneakers employing chromatic shields and all manners of drawing and countering, attacking you and keeping you on your feet and always watching. Enemy squad design is consistently changed up as well, always making you pay attention because one second explosive dog-like creatures will try to rush you and explode in your vicinity, choking your ability to move while missile launching cowards will stand back and pepper you with ordnance. Also, the enemy variety themselves is pretty good with strange sensor-headed eliminators with their hodgepodge armor that looks like it was rivet-bolted by a damn high school auto mechanics class. While the leviathans tower three to four times your size and their weight-correct walk as they limp towards you, dragging the one side of their body that has this massive arm on it is really cool. Everything has a feeling of menace. Another reason this all seems to work so well is that the campaign level design in particular with the added destruction and of course sight lines results in an incredible amount of strategy being needed. One minute you're leaping through a rock wall to take out an enemy who didn't expect, well, that, and in another you're hammering lasers into rubble just hoping that somehow it'll make it through 30 feet of destroyed building because you're down on life and the enemy on the other side is an epic with three additional shield layers. The use of terrain is vital for life here, resulting in you having to not only watch for enemies but understand what's between you and them. Additionally, the destroyed parts of the world around you physically interact with you, slowing you down if you try to sprint through them, as well as enemies. Excellent use of weight here to really make you feel like you're there within the game. And also while running around, you can get in-spot upgrades that overclock your ability to move, do damage, or shoot faster. And while not always laying around when a big battle's coming out, I rarely found myself without one during a heated engagement. But man, make sure that you use them well because they are time-based. Control's very good. It's not perfect, but for controlling robots that stand like 15 to 25 feet tall and can push old desiccated Datsuns out of the way, I think it was actually very well done, especially when you consider the way the battlefield is set up. I also tried it out on the controller and the mouse and keyboard. Both worked fine. The difficulty, for the most part, is just right, and I found the hardest punishing, normal, well, pretty much normal, and easy good for really having a very fun laid-back time. Rewards at the end of the levels do adjust depending on difficulty. But unfortunately, it does have some issues. For example, the lasers or ranged weapons never aimed exactly where my cursor was, but instead was always slightly to the left or right, making gameplay a bit more difficult than I think it needed to be. Now, a recent patch seemed to fix that a little bit, but it still occurs. And also, even though all the engagements were well done and the AI's good, there are engagements where the difficulty can shoot through the roof, especially as you can't move through enemies, so you can get stuck in between them in the world's worst robotic prom date. In those instances, everyone's going down. Also, the lack of local co-op hurts this title immensely. I know it's a dying option, and I know that there's some frame rate issues here, but man, this game, it practically screams for it. And of course, all that brings us to Fun Factor. So, without a doubt, this is the most fun I've had in a twin-stick shooter since Geometry Wars, and I'm not comparing it to that luminary title, but that's just the truth. The unique atmosphere, engaging locations, and the strategies needed, as well as a profoundly well-playing gun dance, meant that I was engaged at all times. It may drop a frame, or three, but hot damn it looks and plays insanely well while doing so. So I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, or never touch again rating scale. This is not only a buy at $19.99, this is easily one of the best games of its kind to come out in the last two years for me. This is exactly what this genre needed. A game that was good, cost just about the right amount of money, and had some insane replayability. And even the mixture of enemy classes, efficient AI, and who gives a fuck about friendly fire kind of gameplay is just outstanding fun. While this has been a hit and miss month for gaming, I'm incredibly stoked to see this genre get a winner. So that's it for me. I hope you liked the review. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Check out Twitter. Make sure to follow me there, patron. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And as always, peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.